I have a little something different for you guys and with this video. Uh, we are going to be talking about Age of Calamity, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, the prequel to Breath of the Freaking Wild. I am so excited for this game. comes out November 20th. Uh, and we know about a bunch of playable characters, but I actually want to talk about characters I think would make sense to be playable. Uh, in addition to the six we already know about, uh, those six being Link, Zelda, Daruk, Rivali, Urbosa, and Mipha. Basically, the four champions in Link and Zelda are confirmed to be playable. We see it in the trailer that you're going to see throughout this, uh, over and over again throughout this video. Uh, but before I get into the characters I think will be in playable in this game and why... I need to remind you that we have a couple giveaways going on right now in the month of September of 2020. Uh, those being for three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars and then a Switch Lite and uh, two uh, Switch games of choice to enter those giveaways. or two separate giveaways. Go down into the description uh, and all the details will be down there. All right. So... I don't want to waste too much of your time on this because I could literally talk about Age of Calamity for days and days and days. There's so much potential here. We're finally going to find out what happened 100 years ago. And that is a key thing to remember when we talk about these characters because we know some characters from Breath of the Wild that played key roles 100 years ago. And those characters that we know played key roles back then are the ones that are probably more than likely going to be in this game. Uh, now, there's possibilities of enemy characters as well i'm not going to dabble into that because we don't know if this is going to have a two side of the story thing like hyrule warriors and other warrior like games have had since this is a canon prequel it might just be a hero's path but we'll see uh we'll talk more about that because we know we're getting more age of calamity news on september 26th so maybe we find out about it then but what i want to talk to you about now are well at least four five maybe six possible well, if you really extrapolate it out, it could be potentially 9 to 10 possible uh, playable characters and why they might be playable. So first up, let's get the most obvious one out of the way. The one that appears in the trailer and we know uh, is one of the, the lead knights that protects Zelda, Impa. We know Impa's in Breath of the Wild. We know Impa was young and around back then and was the protector of Zelda. So we know that Impa plays a big role during the Calamity in terms of her interactions with Zelda. It would make a ton of sense if Impa was playable. And we we see who we presume to be Impa in the trailer uh, in a couple of scenes. So yeah, it's, it's highly likely that it's almost a given that Impa's playable. I'm surprised it wasn't confirmed uh, given her prominent role. Uh, but Impa is going to matter for a character later. We'll get to that. Uh, next up is Pura. So if you don't know, Pura is Impa's sister. Um, she uh, was actually the one. So a lot of people get this confused. Sometimes I even do too. Like, you know, oh, give Impa all the credit for taking Link to the Chamber of Resurrection, right? Because, you, know, you know, Zelda asks them, you know, hey, you got to save Link. Save Link. Uh, it's actually Pura. If you go through her books in her house uh you get to learn a whole lot about her and about her past and one of the things that comes up is that she is the one who actually brought link to the chamber of resurrection that means she clearly played a big role back then uh so having her be playable again like impa makes a lot of sense because if she was entrusted to take link to the chamber of resurrection she clearly had a big role during the age of calamity all right next up this is another one that I'm not 100% I'm not sure about, but I, I kind of think they're going to let this happen, and it's King Rome. So King Rome, uh, we know in uh, what was the king at the time. We've seen him in a couple cutscenes, but we also know he came back in physical form uh, for a little while at the beginning of the game and could physically appear and interact with and touch Link. You get the paraglider from him for crying out loud. So we know that King Ron is, is a little bit special in comparison to, say, the champions because the champions in their uh, ghost forms can't seem to come back physically in the way the king did for a little while. So something happened with the king during the Great Calamity that enabled him to have that special ability to be there for Link. I don't know if there's a, a tie with the, the Chamber of Resurrection or a sacrifice that's made for Link to come back. or I have no idea how, how it happens, how it's done, because we don't know everything that happened 100 years before Breath of the Wild. We just know snippets of it. Anyway, King Rome was a big deal back then. Yes, he was the one sending Zelda off to, to collect the champions and all that and, and, and the Divine Beast. Yes, 
King Rowan sent her on that mission, but it doesn't mean King Rowan was doing nothing while he was there. He was still the king of Hyrule, the leader of the Hyrulean army fighting against him. It would make a ton of sense if the leader of Hyrule was involved in actually fighting against the, the enemies. So even if he's not the one that has the power or the Triforce or whatever Zelda unlocks to save Link and to save everybody, it's still important that the king fights along with his soldiers. So I think King Ron's going to be playable. All right. Next up, this one's a little weird. But hang with me for a moment. Robbie. So we know Robbie was actually around 100 years ago because he played a critical role. If you remember, one of the original plans to battle against uh, Calamity Ganon was to use the guardians that were discovered, right? They uncovered these guardians. Well, Robbie is the one that actually restored the mobility to those guardians. So he is a very technologically savvy person who actually got the guardians up and running. This was obviously before Calamity Ganon took them over, and then, you know, the whole world went to crap. So uh, Robbie is an integral part back then, and it would be cool to see him use some technology-based or some uh, based attacks, I guess. Uh, I feel like because of his role, in, in in the uh, Guardians that it just feels like he has to be playable. Uh, it just makes too much sense. Again, key theme here is all these things we learned from Breath of the Wild about these characters, about what 100 years ago feels like if they were involved 100 years ago, they had to be part of the fight. Uh, next up, this one is interesting. So we have Cass, all right? Maybe not as surprising of a pick to some people because he's the one that, that sings about the history of Hyrule, but it doesn't mean that he witnessed it. So he claims that he learned all these songs and learned all this stuff from uh, a teacher to Princess Zelda, a Sheikah teacher, a Sheikah poet, uh, who lived in Hyrule Castle before Calamity struck um, and that they had a, a love for Princess Zelda. So I don't know if the Sheikah is Impa. I'm not really sure. But uh, it was someone who was very close to Princess Zelda. Cass might have been directly involved in the fighting back then. It's entirely possible that Cass was involved in the fighting and learned the songs after. Cass was clearly alive back then. So that's one of the key things is Cass was alive back then, but he learned the songs about the history of Hyrule uh, from this Sheikah that was in love with Princess Zelda. So we'll have to see uh, what's up with that, of course. But I feel like Cass is going to end up being playable. It's the weakest connection because he just learns about it from somebody that was there. But I feel like Cass was probably there as well, just younger, clearly. Uh, and I believe the Rito have a very long lifespan. So I wouldn't be surprising to have him uh, as a minstrel even back then. He could have been a minstrel of the court even. Uh, and that's how he got in contact with the Sheikah to learn all these historical songs. All right, this last one's weird because I think it's a double-edged sword. So the Divine Beast, we see one of the Divine Beasts in the trailer, and it's blue, which means the Divine Beast is a good guy at that point in the trailer. Now, the Divine Beast being a good guy could just be in a cutscene, and I guarantee you have to fight against the Divine Beast at some point in this game. Guaranteed you're going to have to fight against all four of them because we know... We know once the champions go down minimum that they lose control of the Divine Beast and they go wild and they're still going wild uh, when we get to, uh, you know, the way the state of Breath of the Wild at, at the beginning. But I wonder if before you fight them, because I, I feel like you're clearly going to fight them and kind of get them to stay in, in, in one area. Before you fight them, I think you're going to be able to play as them or play with them for little small parts of the game. I don't know if you get to play as the champion taming them and then as you're taming them, then you get to use them. So I'm not sure the Divine Beast will be playable characters individually on their own, but I do think that you will be able to play and control the Divine Beast, all four of them, for sm small parts of this game, just like what happened back in the day. Because back in the day, the champions did have control of those Divine Beasts for a little while. That was one of the grand master plans, was to use the Divine Beast that you end up, obviously, using in Breath of the Wild. Uh, because obviously we know, you know that we, we, we kind of know where the champions fell and what they fell to. Uh, I'm not, you know, if you haven't gotten that far in Breath of the Wild by now, I don't know what to tell you. But, um, yeah, it's pretty, it, it's, it's a pretty crazy thing to think about these collection of playable characters. I'm, I'm just, I'm just so excited for this game, guys. 
I'm so excited. For those who don't know, like as much as I've been talking Mario here this month, because it's, hey, it's the 35th anniversary. Dude, I'm a Zelda guy, man. I, I can Zelda theorize all day long. I, I could do a video like this every day if I want. Like, I love this series, and ultimately, there's going to be probably even more playable characters than what I mentioned. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how this pans out. Again, new news comes on September 26th of 2020. All right, that's what I got for you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.